Do you know how they say two heads are better than one? Well, to them I say, why limit yourself at two if you can have a whole army to your disposal? Let me elaborate. Last time we've spoken about custom instructions, and if you haven't seen that video or don't know what custom instructions are, go ahead and click the link above to catch up with us. In a nutshell, custom instructions allows us to specify how ChatGPT is going to respond to us. So you can determine the role, the tone, the level of creativity and a bunch of other parameters just to fine tune that interaction with the model. In last week's episode, I've shown you an example of using custom instructions, but that raises one question. What if you want to start multiple conversations with different personas? Well, of course, you can create a persona, talk to it, then rewrite a new persona, talk to that one, and so on and so forth. Of course, you can save the personas that you've already created in a file or notepads or some other software, but that sounds quite tedious. What I want to propose is my workflow of using personas in ChatGPT. So for that purpose, we're going to use a new tool this time called Notion. And if you haven't used Notion before, I strongly recommend trying it out and in this video I'm actually going to show you how to register for an account and how to start using it so you can have a bit of a demo and make up your own decision. You could say that Notion is a Swiss army knife of productivity apps. You can write your notes, you can collaborate with others, you can create spreadsheets, to-do lists, boards with tasks, etc etc. It has a lot of very useful features but it's quite simple to use. But before you create your account let's first think about how we're going to create all those personas that you're gonna be saving in Notion. Just as a reminder from the last video, what I propose is to create a whole set of parameters for your personas with the role, the technical expertise, the tone of voice, and a lot of other ones. So when you create your persona, you can basically fill in this list of different parameters and go ahead and do the work. But why do it manually if we have a tool like ChatGPT at our disposal, which can actually help us create all those personas? So let's jump in there and I'll show you how to do it. So what we're gonna do is creates a brand new conversation, doesn't have to use custom instructions, doesn't have to use priming, any of the other techniques, it can be just a clean slate, new conversation with ChatGPT. And what we're gonna ask it to do is tell us how to create personas using custom instructions. As you can see, the prompt that I've sent is quite verbose. So I'm gonna post it in the description below, just so you don't have to recreate it yourself. Essentially what we're doing is we're reminding ChatGPT of what custom instructions are, telling it what the questions are, and asking it to give us a list of example parameters that we can fill in to customize our personas. And as you can see, it's generated two lists of parameters that we can now use. And for the first one, it's occupation, location, education level, etc. And for the second box, we have tone, response length, depth of information, role assignment at the bottom. I would prefer for role assignment to be at the beginning, but that doesn't really matter. And now let's ask ChatGPT to create a persona of an interior designer using the parameters in the second list. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We have our first persona of an interior designer, and the tone is artistic and creative, response length is detailed, depth of information is comprehensive over reviews of design principles, trends, materials, and techniques. And of course, you can customize each one of those personas to your liking. Next, we're going to create a couple of other personas. So I'm going to go ahead with a lawyer. Again, we get a comprehensive list of attributes. You can also delete some of the parameters which you don't find essential. And we'll finish off with creating a startup CTO persona. And those are just examples for the purpose of this video. But in your case, you can create whatever personas you may need for your purposes. And one last tip I wanted to leave is you do want to keep this conversation running. So don't delete it because anytime you need to create a new persona, all you need to do is basically type in the role and ChatGPT will give you a brand new persona that you can paste into Notion, which we're going to be talking about next. So let's set that up right now. Navigate yourself to a new browser page and search for Notion. And the first result should be Notion's homepage. So go ahead, click on that. And in the top right corner, you'll see the Get Notion Free button. So press that. And you can sign up using either your Google account, your Apple account, or your email address. I've chosen my Google account, which I've created earlier on. So in that case, type in your Google email address, your passwords. Now it's asking me to type in my phone number, so I'll do that. And as soon as I click send, I'll get a text message from Google with a code that I'll need to enter in the next screen. And we're almost there. Now we just need to select what we're planning to use Notion for. So I'll click for personal use. And that's it. We're already in Notion. And on the left hand side, you'll see a couple of example pages and documents, which will help you get up to speed with using Notion. So feel free to click into those and learn more about the powers of Notion. But what we're going to do is start off with creating our page for our ChatGPT personas.
So go ahead and click the add a page button at the bottom of the list and that creates your first Notion document. Call it something like ChatGPT personas. Feel free to give it an emoji just so it's easier to find once you have a whole bunch of different documents and you'll want to select a template which will be the base of your document. So we're going to go with Boris because that's going to be the easiest way for us to manage our personas. Now you'll need to select a data source. Don't worry about it, just select the bottom option of new database and you'll see a brand new board with three cards already created and each of those cards will store one of our personas. So let's start copying those personas straight from ChatGPT into Notion. So let's jump back into our conversation and copy our interior designer into the first card. And copy the persona over. Now if you paste it directly into your page, it will work fine. But now if you want to again copy that text back into ChatGPT, into custom instructions, you'll need to drag to select the whole block of text, which is a bit error prone and just could be simplified. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Instead of pasting the whole thing, first create a code block. And to do that, all you need to do is click slash and type code and it will create a code block for you. So now inside just paste the whole block of text for the persona. And as you can see, you have a little copy button at the very top, which is just going to make things a lot simpler and easier. And of course, don't forget to add an emoji to your persona. Now let's repeat the process for the other personas that we've created. So first the lawyer. And then the CTO. Great, so this is starting to look good, but I'm sure we can still improve the way it looks. So as you can see, now we have a list of different personas in the to-do column of our board. And to-do is just a status of our cards, which is a default parameter, which we really don't need to worry about. A better way to categorize our personas is by their type or tag. So the interior designer would be something more related to home improvements, whereas the lawyer and the startup CTO sound more like jobs, so work. So what we'll do now is go back into one of the personas, say the interior designer, and add a property, name it something like tag or type or whatever you fancy. And for the type, we're gonna choose multi-select. And now we're going to be able to create new options for that property. So in the case of the interior designer, we're going to select home and apply it to that persona. And again, we're going to repeat the process for the lawyer and the CTO, and we're going to give them the tag of work. That is all great, but it's not really reflected in our board yet. So let's change that. Let's go into the settings of the whole board by clicking the three dot button in the top right corner. And you'll see a whole bunch of different properties which you can explore at your own time. But what we're gonna be looking at is the group property. So go ahead and click that. And the first option is group by, and we're gonna change it from status, which we don't use, to tag, which we've just created. And as soon as you click that, your board will be realigned and you'll have a separate column for home, a separate one for work, and one for each of the different tags that you'll create. We'll also have the no tag column for all the different personas that don't have a tag yet, which in our case is zero. So what we can do is just click the three dots button again, this time next to the column and select hide. And this is already looking quite elegant. Of course, we're going to be creating more and more personas, so it's going to look even better with time and will become increasingly more useful to your custom instructions workflow with ChatGPT. The last thing I want to do is create a persona for that first box in custom instructions. And as a reminder, that first box is more more of a description of yourself. So we're going to be basically creating a persona for yourself. Now again, you can have multiple personas depending on what the circumstances of your conversation are. If it's something to do with work, your household or your family or your friends. So for this purpose, I'm going to create a persona of a content creator for myself. And I'm going to go back into ChatGPT and copy the first list that ChatGPT has given me in the beginning of our conversation. And paste that into my new page and change some of the parameters. So occupation, content creator, location in London, education level is actually in place. And, and I'll apply a new tag for this role, which will be just me. So we'll have a separate column for the me personas, which we're going to be pasting in that first box rather than the second one. And that, my friends, is how I use Notion to organize my personas for future use with ChatGPT's custom instructions.
And I'm gonna show you a very quick demo of using that workflow. So I want to talk to a CTO about creating a website for my business. So I'll go into Notion, copy over the persona for the startup CTO, go to custom instructions. And in the second box, I will paste in the persona, click save and create a new conversation, ask my question, have my conversation, and done. That's as simple as it gets. And then if I want to talk to my interior designer, again, I'll follow the same steps, go back into Notion, select the interior designer, copy the persona, paste it into ChatGPT's custom instructions, and create a new conversation. And that's basically it. That's, that's really how simple using this workflow is. So, I really hope you found this video useful and I'm sure you're gonna give Notion a try. And using it actually was a bit of a spoiler for our next episode where we're gonna be talking about Notion AI, which is a bit of a collaboration between ChatGPT and Notion. And I'll show you how you can further improve your productivity using that tool. As always, if you want to learn more about tools and tips like this one, please subscribe and like this video so you're notified about new content that I create every week. And I'll see you next time. Take care.